for the Orioles and the Yankees. For Baltimore, leading off and playing center field, it's Paul Blair. Luis Aparicio, that shortstop, batting second. John Boo Powell, the left fielder, hitting third. Brooks Robinson, the most valuable player in the league last year in the cleanup spot, playing third base. Norm Seaburn at first base, he's batting fifth. Kurt Fleffrey, the right fielder, hit a three-run homer here on Friday night. He's batting sixth. John Orsino will do the catching. He'll bat seventh. Jerry Adair, who set a new major league fielding record for second baseman. He has accepted 420 chances without a miscue. This is over two seasons, but the records go on. He cracked the late Ken Hubbs record, who did it with the Chicago Cubs a couple of years ago. So Jerry Adair is batting in the eighth spot and playing second base, and Dave McNally doing the pitching. The managers, Johnny Keene and Hank Bauer at home plate with the umpires going over the ground rules. And we'll take a look at the Yankee lineup. Leading off and playing center field is Tommy Tresh. Bobby Richardson batting second, playing second base. Joe Pepitone, who started to hit, is at first base and batting third. Mantle in the cleanup spot, playing left field. Hector Lopez playing right field in place of the injured Roger Maris. Maris, who pulled a hamstring muscle, is out of action and is back in Independence, Missouri and will be there for about two weeks before he rejoins the ball club after their two-week road trip commencing on Tuesday. So Hector Lopez will be in right field against the left-handed throwing Dave McNally. Lopez will bat fifth. Tony Kubek playing at short, hitting sixth. Phil Lynn playing third base again for the second day in a row. Cleet Boyer out of action because of the upset stomach that he had yesterday, a slight case of the flu, so he is down, although he's in uniform and here today, but Johnny Keene is not expecting to use him except in an emergency. Lynn at third, batting seventh. Bob Schmidt, the catcher, hitting eighth. Elston Howard still out of the lineup with that bad throwing arm. And, of course, this is a day-to-day -day proposition with Ellie. Manager Keene hoping that he can get back in action quickly. But we'll just have to wait and see. So Schmidt is catching and batting eighth. And Mel Stottlemyre will be doing the pitching and batting ninth. The batteries again for the Orioles. Orsino catching, McNally pitching. For the Yankees, Schmidt catching and Stottlemyre pitching. Well, the conference at home plate has broken up. The umpires going to their respective positions. There go the Yankees on the ball field. And we'll give it the umpires right now. It's Larry Knapp behind the plate. Cal Drummond at first. Bill Kinneman at second. And the veteran and senior man in the group, John Stevens at third base. Mel Salomire approaching the mound. Lopez in right. Fresh in center. Mantle in left. Lins at third. Kubek at short. Richardson at second. Pepitone at first. Schmidt behind the plate. And in just one moment, our national anthem.
right to remind all you Yankee fans also that tomorrow night here at the stadium, the Mets and the Yankees in the third annual Marist Trophy game. Right here at the stadium, both teams have won one. So we're going for the rubber game as the Mets and the Yankees meet for the third time. And incidentally, all the benefits of this ball game go to the sandlotters of the greater New York area. A worthy cause for the children in and around New York. Mel Sottlemyre continues to warm up. Moving on, the leadoff batter, Paul Blair. And moving in to carry you through the first part of this ball game, the old redhead, Red Barber. Thank you, Jerry. Friends, it's a beautiful afternoon. Two big ball games at the big ball park. Sotomayor, number 30, who is 2-1 for the season. It's just a pair of shutouts at the expense of Los Angeles. is ready to go. There's a rookie ball player. What's on first? Paul Blair. From the young right-hand hitting center fielder. In that pretty short and power. So far, this series stands a game and a game. Orioles lowered the boom out here Friday night. The Yankees retaliated yesterday. First pitch is a curve outside. Bob Smith makes the return. As Jerry told him, he's catching the first from Howard. He is unable to play. They hoped during batting practice they could at least get him in at first base. At the time, they couldn't. Curve is over for the strike. One and one. Had Howard played, he would have gone to first base and Tuppeton would have gone to right. But Elston Zadovich, Tuppeton is at first. Hector Lopez and right. Slow curve is just wide. Ball two. Graham, in his rookie campaign, has 11 for 55, a percentage of 200. But now, sir, considering all things, is a fair enough beginning. He had two hits out here yesterday. Two on pitch. Low. Ball three. This is Blair's first time to the big town, to the big park. Yesterday, when I met him, his immediate reaction was instead of saying, well, I'm glad to meet you, or anything else, he said, the big ball park. 3-1 pitch, swung on, a ground ball down to third, it lends it up to the third over the first in time, and we have one up. He's got a good crowd, Jerry told you, though, have plenty of seats of all kinds, he both in the vicinity, just the beginning of the day. There's Louis Aparicio. He's the one fellow they hate to see get on unless there's a base runner ahead of him. Hitting 305. Takes a strike on the outside. The slider. Strike one. Aparicio, 18 hits. He has stolen six times. Pitch is in. Strike two. Bellamite is coming down to that one above the knees. Nothing into. A very light breeze going back in. Curve down to foul to the third base coach, Billy Hunter. Gene Woodling closing down at first. It's not a win, just a very light breeze. It just comes and it goes. Two strikes to little Louie. And Bill is up a step. Show an overly close stand. Swings at a ground ball, slowly down to third, lends it up. Over to first base in the dirt. Capitan comes up with it on the bounce for the out. So Lenz is thrown out to first two. And here is a big young left fielder. All oh, 245 pounds of him. John Powell. 14 for 60. He's batted in 14. Hit two home runs, and his home run out here Friday night turned the tide in that ball game. Sotomayor delivers, and Powell hits the ground ball too short. Kubek is up with it. Over the first, in time, but two steps. Powell is out. Orioles are tied in order to start the double header and the score. At the end of half an inning, the Orioles nothing, the Yankees coming to bat. Are you giving your car every chance to perform at its best? You're not if you allow damaging deposits to interfere with the efficient operation of the carburetor. It's a known fact that some gasolines leave deposits around the carburetor throttle plate, and as they build up, 
These deposits can cause rough idling, wasted gasoline, and stalling. But that won't happen when you use Atlantic Imperial, the clean carburetor gasoline. Even if deposits have already accumulated in the throttle plate area, a few tankfuls of Atlantic Imperial will dissolve them and wash them harmlessly away. And they won't return so long as you continue to use Atlantic Imperial. So if your engine doesn't run as smoothly as you'd like, maybe you're not giving it a chance. See what happens when you use Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. first inning, and for the Yankees, as they move into the last half hour, it is Crash, who's had uh, six hits, three each so far in the two games played, then Richardson and then Capito. The Yankees have this hospital there, which is formidable. There's the left-hander, Dave McNally, delivering over for the strike. McNally is 0-1. Now he's never beaten New York. He's 0-4 with him right side. Short career. But he's too low of all ones. Trash is switching, batting left-handed, hitting at 3-11. He's half dozen hits against Baltimore. Six is average right on up there. He's now moved up in total hits to uh, equal Richardson. He's for 19. That's a high foul out of play in the first base stand. The Mets are over here tomorrow night for the Mayor's Trophy. And after that game, the Yankees are on the road for three weeks. Uh, two weeks. Press takes wide. Ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. McNally pitching the first game. Orsino, who is catching the entire series, apparently, back of the plate. No change on the infield. Two-two delivery. High outside. He let up. Four count. Stephen at first base. Adair, who has set a new record for consecutive chances for second baseman. And the record is still alive at that post. Aparicio at short. Third baseman last year's MVP, Brooks Robinson. Big John Powell in left field. Paul Blair, the rookie in center. Pitch is swung on a high foul out of play. First base again. Before. Right field is another rookie for Baltimore, Craig Bluffery. That would be something if the Orioles could bring these two outfield rookies off in one year, wouldn't it? Three two pitch, swung on a high pop up. Chuck Step up ratio, sunglasses down, moving under it, under it, under it, and makes the catch right at the edge of the inner grass. Bill McNally wouldn't get in and wound up getting crashed. Here is Richardson hitting a 358. Square rig, right hand header. Defense practices straight away. Bobby takes a low inside curve for ball one. Just up Aparicio has shaded Richardson over to third. Nale delivers low outside for the fastball. Ball two. Frank Cosetti coaching his third to New York. Brand Benson down at first. We have no score. If you just got in with us, we've had four outs in this first game. The pitch. Everything on the infield, even. Two nothing pitch. Low and gets loose from the catcher for ball three. Washington at Cleveland. Boston at Detroit. Minnesota, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Kansas City. That's the rest of the American League picture. In the National League, the Mets of Cincinnati, the Bills of Milwaukee, Hodge of St. Louis, the Cubs of Houston. By the way, Houston won two yesterday. They're spring now. It's 10 straight. San Francisco is at Los Angeles, where they have hung out the crate all over the city of Angels. 3 nothing pitch. In for the strike. 3 and one. 
one genuine hitter that the Dodgers possess, two-time batting champion, Tommy Davis. And last night's ball game broke his right. Three-one pitch in for Spencer. And the best estimate right now, of course, nobody can say for sure, is that Davis has lost for at least two months. Three-two pitch, swung on, a high pop-up in the sharp center field. There is a bear of the second base for Hendrick, and he makes the catch, and his uh, record spring now is 4-21. Second chance. Joe Pepitone. You can't get me that a dad doesn't know what's going on, and I bet you he's heaved a sigh of relief that he's had one more chance and handled it. hitting left-handed. Still has the bandage on his left wrist where Jim Cott hit him. McNally carries him low outside, but kind of until I can hit him. Ball one. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Curve is low. Papa don't check this swing. What is it the court to ask what is so rare as a day in June? Well, we might answer him by saying, well, this one, May 2. Two nothing pitch, a ground ball, wide at first. Steven is up with it. The pitch is over to take the first pitch. We're talking about. No cover down is saved by Tommy with Dan. The photo was fed to him by Steven with Rocket, and the pitcher just simply dropped it. There's an arrow. It is charged. Charge to the pitcher. This gets Mantle up. McNally charged with an arrow, of course. No other way to score that one. Stephen, by the way, gets an assist if you are scoring everything to the dot of a nine, the crossing of a T. Here's Mantle hitting right handed. Takes a curve over for a call strike. Mickey hitting at 300 right on the nose, 12 for 40. Mantle is over 500 with his on base percentage. Back one pitch, one on a ground ball, two thirds. Robinson goes to second base for the fourth. Pepper Jones, next thing is second, five to four. If you're scoring, that's another chance for a day up. His record swing is now 422. Charge Mantle the fourth, no runs, no hits, one left, one out. When your carburetor came from the factory, it was clean. No manufacturer would send out a carburetor with dirt or foreign matter which would interfere with its performance. But dirt can begin to accumulate as soon as you start to drive your car. It depends on the gasoline you use. Some gasolines leave deposits around the carburetor throttle plate. And as they build up, these deposits can cause rough idling, wasted gasoline, and stalling. It's easy to avoid these annoying problems, though, just use Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Atlantic Imperial will even dissolve the damaging deposits other gasolines may have left in the throttle plate area, dissolve them and wash them harmlessly away. And continued use will help prevent their return. So use Atlantic Imperial, the clean carburetor gasoline, and look for smoother performance. Work in the second inning to Robinson. Pitches him high for ball one. Brooks Robinson hitting a 250, 15 for 60. Shade him a step around toward left. Swings and has a high fly out the mantle. Mickey waiting in his track. Waiting. Yeah. Well, I'd say that's the easiest chance that Mantle has had all year. Norm Steven, the left hand hitting first baseman. And 
then to the first inning, game one. Washington is Cleveland, scoreless. Stephen takes a strike. Just throws the A's on the inside. Just nicked it. In the Washington Cleveland opener, it's McCormick going against Curley. Strike one pitch. Strike two, right back in the same spot. Bottom aisle with these two pitches. Threaded the eye of the needle. I mean the sewing needle. I don't mean the needle, which is referred to uh, through a wall the camels used to get through. As a base hit in the center field. Single into center. Game's first safety. One out. Man at first. And the hitter is Craig Leffrey. Across the river over in New Jersey. This is the boy the Orioles drafted out of the Yankee organization. He's hitting 263. Ten hits, four of them for the work. His fourth home run was right here Friday night, way back in the lower right field seat. There's only one question about the home run that he hit Friday night. The left-hand batter and takes low inside. When I saw the ball hit, the only question I had was whether it was going to hit in the third deck or not. He just missed it. I feel well around toward right. The way this fellow swings and throws, he was tailor-made for this ballpark. Swings and long drive deep off the right turn. That's five. This is way back to the Yankee bullpen. Nothing to it. who now takes the American League lead in home runs with five. The Orioles go ahead 2-0. Boy, not many fellas did home runs off Stoudemire. He hit this one to the back of the Yankee boat there, not the front part, back of it. And here is Orsino taking a strike. Orsino hitting a 300. This gives Buffery now 12 runs out of the end. Five home runs out of 11 hits. 2 nothing Baltimore. There is a ball hit to Kubo. One hit to Kubo. Kubo leaped up. Beautiful one-handed catch. That does the crowd. That was a soft line drive. Tony timed it beautifully. Up he went. Two out. Here's Jerry Adair, the second baseman. Tied a record. Set a new one yesterday. It's the second baseman. He's adding to it so far today. Right hand batter. Curve is inside. Ball one. There hits right handed. Took the bat slightly. And that Zuckery hit that ball. Ooh. Curve pops up. Just stop two back. 100. Edge of the outfield drive. Squeezes it for the third out. No runs. Two hits. So the Bluffery story gathers momentum and the score, first game end of one and a half, the Orioles two, Yankees nothing. <laughs> Second inning following a pause for stage identification. 1460 on your dial. This is WOKO, Albany, New York.
McNally ready to pitch to Hector Lopez. Does in close to the hand. Ball one. McNally, who has never beaten the Yankees, lost to them four times. Now is two up. Thanks to Curtin Bluffer's fifth home run in the back of the Yankee bullpen. Second pitch to Lopez. Ball two. High inside. Defense straight away on Hector. Roger Maris, as you know, is not here. Going home. Swing and a miss. Try it. Swing one. Two nothing Baltimore. We have Maris at home with the pulled hamstring muscle in his right leg. Howard unable to play again today. Boyer came ill yesterday. He's not playing. Curve on tied ball three. Two balls, one strike. Pitch. Foul back. Three and two. Dave McNally. Delivers. Lopez fouls this one off. Will anybody ever surprise you of that fact enough? But he can. Brooks Robinson went right up against the line. He doesn't look spectacular because he does his rather easily. But somehow he just throws that snake over to first base. Now I have one down. Last and second. Here's Tony Kubak. Takes the pitch over first strike. McNally started out in pro ball in 61, came up to Baltimore the next year, 62. Pitches inside, far away. It's only in one game, 63. I'd say two years ago was his first full season for the Orioles. When it was 7 and 8, last year was 9 and 11. He can be quite valuable this year. Curveball is hit down the left field line, close to the stand, and back in for a power. Strike two. Tony was rounded first, now has to return. Dave McNally. He's not big as Major League left-handers go. 5'11", 185. To me, he doesn't look that heavy. But the book says. One ball, two strikes. One out. Last to the second. Field is laid into left on Tony. He takes inside. Ball two. Going to. Kubek had a big home run yesterday. Eight for 48. Ken Mantle leads the club and runs out in with 10. Tony swings and misses. That was a sharp curve off his hand. McNally just kept pitching him inside. Finally nicked him. That's his first strike out. Now we have two gone. And the batter is filled in. Ben's finally got his first hit yesterday. He's one for ten. He's the backup infielder. He's in there now. A boy out. Came up with an upset stomach yesterday. Ben takes low inside. Ball one. Like now this pitch is grounded down to third. Robinson up with it. Plenty of time. The throw over to first to Steven. Sides down in order. Score at the end of two. Baltimore 2, New York nothing. Gary, what's coming up for tomorrow night? Well, we got the big one tomorrow night here, the Mayor's Trophy game between the Yankees and the Mets. And, of course, the Mayor's Trophy game is for the benefit of Sandlot Baseball here in New York. The real beneficiaries are the youngsters of New York Sandlot. 
All proceeds from tomorrow night's big charity game will go to the New York Yankees and the New York Mets Foundations for disbursement to organizations supporting Sandlot Baseball. Bill Stafford is expected to be the Yankee starter Monday night. And manager Johnny Keene has indicated that he'll start all of his available regulars. Plenty of box seat and reserve seats available at all Yankee and Mets ticket offices. But of course, this is always a big one here when these two New York teams get together. We suggest you get yours before you come out tomorrow evening. The Yanks and the Mets in the Mayor's Trophy game for Sandlot Baseball at Yankee Stadium tomorrow night, game time, 8 p.m. And also a reminder that this game will be broadcast on WCBS in the New York area and on our Home of Champions Network. There will be no television tomorrow night. Well, looks like we're ready to go in the third inning. Now, here's Red Barber to tell you all about it. Well, if you want a summation, friend, you just tuned in. Craig Bluffer, the one man on, hit a home run, second inning to the back of the Yankee bullpen behind right field. That's the ball game right up to here. And here's Fitz McNally, who hits him right handed, taking the first uh, delivery of the third inning of this opener. Go out to our ball one. Front of my delivers, and that's a ground ball to second. Richards in front of it, up with it, over to first. One out. Pepitone at first, Richardson at second, two back at short, Lynn at third. Get Mantle in left, Crest in center, and Hector Lopez at right. Bob Smith with a left hander starting for Hank Bauer, catching the first one. There's Paul Blair, the rookie center fielder, right hand hitter. Paul tipping the first pitch for a strike. The building on the board, Mickey Mantle's on base average this season is 500. You know, the big fella gets a tremendous number of walks. Pitch inside the play for ball one. Mantle has had 17 walks, four of them in his period. Blair hits a fly ball out into short center. Crest is loping in under it and takes it for out number two. Two down. Two nothing Baltimore. And here's Aparicio. Even though the fans out here are predominantly Yankee fans, they'd like to see Aparicio get on because everybody loves to see him run. That he does, extremely well. Takes the fastball inside, ball one. Right hand hitter, takes the curve for the strike. Louis stole 57 last year. Led the American League nine straight years. Full curve is over, strike two. Next up in the lead your league nine straight years. He's on his way to making it ten. Easy. Stolen six already. One, two, pitch. Swung on, foul back. One and two. The Yankees is going very, very well at the gate. The attendance has been surprisingly fine start of the season. The Yankees have gone well over the 100,000 mark at home page. And they've only been home briefly. One, two, pitch. Slow. Two and two. When the Yankees come back, we bring the Red Sox, Senators, Indians. Pitches low outside, ball three. After an absence of five days, the flood comes in, start of June, and the White Sox. So the big ones are yet to come. Come they will. Now start of my arm. Has to pitch 3-2 to Aparicio. Ball right-handed delivers. Aparicio hits a high one down along the left field line and out of play into the stand. Mantle is over there just to be certain. Three balls, two strikes. 
Send to. Send the right hand that pitches and that your ground ball. Slowly it is short. Two back hurries and just gets it. He just got it. Nothing across. First game. Score end of two and a half. The Orioles two and the Yankees nothing. Can you recognize this old tune? Did you recognize it? Well, maybe you will if we play it this way. Sure. It's Jeannie with the light brown hair. Stephen Foster composed it way back in 1854. By the time it caught on, P. Valentine and Sons had been in the brewing business for almost two decades. This is Valentine's 125th birthday. The best year yet to try fresh, crisp Valentine beef. Join the celebration. Come to the birthday blowout where you buy your beef. And if today happens to be your birthday, Happy birthday from Valentine. The last half of the third inning, first game, doubleheader here at the stadium. Orioles leading 2 nothing. Bob Smith will lead it off to New York, then start of my arm, from the top of the order strike. At Dandy McNally pitches to Smith, in for the strike. Smith hitting at 364, 4 for 11. He and Blanchard are having to do the work now. Howard having that bad right arm. As pitch right back on the outside, strike two. Coming in two. Flip back right-handed. He defends him somewhat into left. McNally delivers the curve low inside. Smith checks his swing. It was close. Ball one. They both on the board. Saturday night, Astros won 10th in a row, 6-1 over Cobb. Los Angeles 4, San Francisco 2. 1-2 pitch, high outside, fastball, ball two. But to repeat, the Dodger win was very costly. They couldn't have made a more valuable playoff, in my opinion. Tommy Davis. Broke his ankle. Smith strikes out. The ball was kicked and held by Orsino. One down. Last of the third. And here is now Sotomayor has one hit. I'm going to take that back. Coming on. Orsino out of the mound from brief refresher chat with McNally. Now the pitch is in for the strike. No balls on strike. The defense is straight away on Sotomayor, not too deep. That's low for a ball. Now our statistician Bill Kane has given us a little bit more detail on the injury to Tommy Davis of the Dodgers. This is going inside, ball two. He broke his right ankle sliding into second base in the fourth inning last night, and the estimate now is that he'll be out for three months. Could be for the year. Because you know about as much as anybody knows about how an ankle, a broken ankle is going to respond. The ground ball is short. I appreciate you up with it. Over to first, out of my Two down. Two out, last to the third, and the batter is trash who pops it short in the first inning. Trent and Richardson, each gunning for that 20th hit. Two out. Hitting right-handed, takes the third, low inside, ball one. Mike Nally with a 2 nothing lead, trying to pitch his first win over the Yankees. Left-handed delivers, and it's fouled off. Eight is hit. Played on Pine Nap on the left foot. It hurts. Long one. 
Two down. McNally a change as a ground ball slowly to a third. Robinson has to hurry. The throw. He got him. He's a fella can play third base. He got him on the slow roller. That's the toughest play. He's playing out. Fresh runs well, as you know. So at the end of three, it is Baltimore two and New York nothing. And the next portion of this first ball game will be brought to you by the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, makers of Camel, Winston, and Salem cigarettes. At the end of two innings first game, Washington won, Cleveland nothing, and nothing else has started. So you're up to date about the baseball picture. And I want to get over to the second baseman, Mr. Coleman, who uh, made the comment when Adair set the record yesterday, 420 consecutive chances without an error, that it was impossible. Jerry, I think you've got a, a little bit more detail on um, the work of Adair. Well, I sure do, Red. It isn't only the fact that he has accepted that now 422 chances without a miscue, but he actually has four major league fielding records to his credit. Besides extending his consecutive chances, he has the record for the most consecutive airless games, which is 84. That also passed the old mark of 78 by Ken Hubbs. And last year, he set two seasonal records, the fewest errors in a season, five, and the highest fielding percentage for second baseman, 984. But Red, I don't know what more you can say, except that it's, it's the type of a thing that uh, will live with him all of his life, and I know he's going to be proud of it. I, I congratulated him today, and he kind of blushed a little bit. I don't know why he should. Well, let's just say he is uh, one of these rare birds. He's a nice, retiring young man. And there's another one who is very nice and shy and retiring until he gets a bat in his hands, and it's the big John Powell, 245 pounds. This is playing one. Salomon fits him low inside ball one. Big left-handed uh, swing up. Takes an outside change, four balls two. Powell was thrown out short to first. The opening inning. Powell for a big man moves very, very easily. It's a very easy swing, fouls it back. He moves so easily at the plate. Swings uh, so easily that you're not aware of, of what a formidable figure he cut. Johnny Myers was that way for a big man. John wasn't quite as big as Powell. But the big cat, that's what DeRocha named him, uh, he moves very easily in the box with that deceptively fluid swing. Salomar pitches 2-1. Powell swings a hot one that witnesses from Butler. Goes over to first and Powell. The drive before he gets started. He really put the wood to it. It was a real hot iron drive. Bobby came up with it on the short hop. So the backhanded stab. So the folks here at the stadium are seeing things this afternoon. One out. Now we have Brooks Robinson. Who has started out today as though he was going to give lessons on how to play third base. Swings and hits the ground ball to third. Lynn's up with it. The throw over to first. In time, and Brooks is up. Two down. Norm Steven singles to the middle in the second inning. First of the game, two hits. Then Bluffy followed right back at him with a home run. Two nothing in favor of the Orioles. Steven. Tall, rangy, left-handed batter. Panama sets his one run in the ground ball to second. Right to Richardson. And that's off to Steven. Robert over to Peppertor. Coming across. Score. End of three and a half. Baltimore two. New York nothing. Next time you buy cigarettes. Try something different for a change. Trinity Salem, Trinity Salem, you'll enjoy that springtime taste. Trinity Salem, Trinity Salem, for a taste that springtime fresh. For a filter cigarette with rich tobacco taste that's really different, turn to Salem. Salem refreshes your taste with a pleasing menthol flavor that's smooth and soft. Try Salem. America's largest selling menthol cigarette. Trinity Salem, Trinity Salem, you enjoy that springtime taste. Trinity Salem, Trinity Salem, for a taste that springtime fresh. Smoke Salem filter cigarette.
Lewis and first up last to the fourth inning. McNally, a young left hand on the round for Baltimore, leading two nothing pitches, and Bobby takes a good curve for a tall strike. This is a very excited crowd, a beautiful, beautiful day, and we're having some wonderful play. Her ball is hit high out into the right field, right to Bluffton, waiting right in his track. Makes the catch, the rookie right fielder. One down. Capitone got on, so the pitches are in the first inning, and the doctor's off the first base. Joe, left hand batter. Left hand to McNally, delivers, and there's a bunt, pushed up to a third, and foul. Capitone figured that he had the third baseman Robinson deep, and I think he did. One of the ball across the line. Nothing in one. Papadon, of course, trying to get on ahead of Mantle. Pitch is low. Papadon, uh, you know, got hit on the left wrist. He strained the other one. He's got a blister on his hand. So in addition to bunting, just now I'm thinking the third base is deep. He doesn't want to swing too much. Cut, fires this one off. Right the Yankees are having their aches and pains. Howard is still out. Marsh is home. Boyer has not recovered from his upset stomach. Curve right side, ball two. Two into it. The Pepitone, bad hands and wrists and all, is up there. But the only question about Joe today was... Not that he was playing the way he was playing, but well, the first base to right field. If Howard uh, would have made it, it would have been a first, and Tupperton would have gone to the outfield. Pitch is low outside, ball three, three and two. In the second game, it will be the veteran right-hander, Robin Roberts, pitching against young left-hander from New York, Al Dowdy. Outfield is up to right. Tupperton a half swing, a loop along the left field line, foul. Three and two. One out. Nobody on. Last to the four. McNally delivers. Inside. Ball four. Cut the down. The dog. Base average of 500. He's getting just under 300. The pitcher batting right handed. McNally puts the first, delivers, and that'll take my outside ball one. At the end of two and a half innings, first game, it is Washington 2, Cleveland nothing. McNally delivers, and that'll follow in the day. Boston plays a doubleheader in Detroit. Minnesota, a doubleheader at Chicago. And Los Angeles, a doubleheader at Kansas City. And I've been feeling sorry for the athletics all day, ever since I looked at the morning paper. Wait a minute, tell you about that in a second. Here's one one pitch to Mantle. My outside ball, too. I saw in the paper where the Angels are going to start in the doubleheader at Kansas City, Newman and Chance. Now, don't you know that the uh, athletic hitters enjoyed their breakfast? They couldn't wait to get to the ballpark. Uh-huh. All right, two balls, one strike. Mantle up, up to on the first. Two nothing Baltimore. Mickey swings the ground ball, two short. Over the second, one. A day out of first, two. Double play, right to the mouth. Table made, six to four to three. Adair just keeps adding to his rocket. He's going to make it hard for somebody to break it. And the score at the end of four. Baltimore two. New York nothing. 
For menthol soft flavor in a filter cigarette. Try something different for a change. Change to Salem. Change to Salem. You'll enjoy that springtime taste. Change to Salem. Change to Salem. For a taste that springtime fresh. For a filter cigarette with rich tobacco taste that's really different, turn to Salem. Salem refreshes your taste with a pleasing menthol flavor that's smooth and soft. Try Salem, America's largest selling menthol cigarette. Change to Salem. Change to Salem. You'll enjoy that springtime taste. Change to Salem. Change to Salem. For a taste that's springtime fresh. Smoke Salem filter cigarettes. Well, here's the young man who's a carrot for the run, Craig Fluffery. He's hit five home runs so far in the beginning of his major league career. He's hit two of them here. His home run in the second inning following Stephen Stingle has accounted for the two runs on this first one. And, of course, this is the big story, and it is growing bigger with every uh, successful swing of this fellow's bat. This is the fellow the Yankees had. They started him. He was supposed to come into this ballpark, and the Yankees took the care of all the first strike. And then the Yankees uh, decided themselves to bring in Harry Bright and have a 25th man on the ball club as a ground foul. And then the paperwork shuffled. This fellow got uh, up for grabs and Baltimore got him on waiver. And the rest of the story is yet to be written. He wrote some more in his last side back. Hit it to the back of the bullpen. Takes a low curve. One ball, two strikes. After he's done nothing else, he's picked it up to where the powers that beat Baltimore cannot hang the word Rochester over his head. They weren't playing him much in the spring training in the start of the season. Pitch low down by his feet. Salomar had him skip rope or two. So, uh, Bluffery at the end of spring training camp popped off somebody about the fact he wanted to play. <laughs> of course he wants to play. First Lee McPhail and then Hank Bauer said, listen, boy, send you to Rochester if you don't keep quiet. They can't send him there now. Fatima ready to work two and two. Delivers. Cluffer swings. There's a ground ball through the mound. Back of second. Rips him up with it over the first base. Not in time. Cluffer, who can run very well. Beat it out for an infield single. A fine play by Bobby. The ball was not hit too sharp. So Cluffer is two for two. Single through the middle. Nice effort by the second base. So this drops out as off in inning five. Let's take a look over at the National League. A doubleheader with a Mets for Cincinnati, Fisher for New York, Maloney for Cincinnati in the open. Philadelphia and Milwaukee for two. Short going against LeMaster. Pittsburgh to St. Louis for a pair. Friend will start against Gibson in the opener. Cubs for a single is Houston. The Astros have won their last ten. And San Francisco playing a single at L.A. In the deck. Blocked by Catcher Smith. Ball one. Hitter is the catcher, right hand batter, John Orsino. Two nothing Baltimore. Somebody out, top of the set. Now feel well around toward left. Frank. Got a line above the knees on the outside. Orsino went into the ball game at 300. 15 for 50. Kubek made the acrobatic leap. Catches soft line. Second inning. One one pitch. Low outside. Ball two. Salomar pitches low, and his pitches have a natural tendency to sink. If we just sat here and called sinker, 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 it'd get to be a little monotonous. That's what's happening. Salomar checks his runner. Pitches. 
There goes a runner there. The ground ball hit back to the mound. Throw second. They got one. And the throw to first is a double play. Despite the fact they had to hit the run off. They started the runner. And I've seen that the ball. I one bounce right back to the bottom of my arm. It was a splendid all around athlete. He knew what to do with it. He got it down to Richardson. Second base was covering with a right-hand header up. It meant the shot that had to stay over in the hole. So that's the DP. One, four, two, three. Two out, nobody on. And here is the second baseman, Jerry Adair, adding to his record today. His record, this should say, takes a strike. Nothing in one. Then straight away. There is hit high to right center field. It is very high. There is the right field of Hector Lopez on this for the third out. No runs, one hit, nobody left, thanks to the DP. And in the first game, score in the four and a half. Baltimore two and New York nothing. Okay, ready for a refreshing thought? Think about a crisp, clean, lively Valentine beer. Now, my friend, you've got the light idea. Valentine's a beer that brings on a smile. The beer that satisfies without filling. And that crisp, clean taste is so easy to stay with. Beer after beer after beer. Okay, now you've got the idea. So now you walk right up. Wrap your hand around a Valentine for real. Crisp, clean Valentine beer gives you a smile every time. America's finest since 1840. We'll have the last half of the fifth inning following a pause for station identification. Your attention, please. You're listening to Yankee Baseball on WOKO, Albany, New York. Thank you. Moving on to the last half of the fifth. Moving into the microphone, Jerry Colton. Thanks, Red. Here's Hector Lopez facing Dave McNally, two to nothing Orioles, as Lopez fouls the first pitch back and it's strike one. Hector was out on a fine fielding play by the third baseman, Brooks Robinson, in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. 2 for 10, and even 200 on the air. Lopez, right hand batter. McNally delivers outside. The 1 and 1 the count. Orioles have two runs on three hits. The Yankees, no runs, no hits, no nothing up there right now. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Curve that's high, two and one. The Orioles defense is playing Lopez straight up the middle. In fact, Paul Blair in center field is almost, if you drew a line from home to the mound to second base to center field, he's right there. Here's a foul out of play to the right. Two balls, two strikes. Two and two the count on Lopez, leading off the bottom of the fifth. He'll be followed by Tony Kubek and Phil Lynn. Vern Benson coaching at first base for the Yankees. At third, Frank Crossetti. Beautiful day and a fine crowd at the stadium as McNally is into the windup. 2-2 pitch, inside, 3-2. Trying to hit the inside corner with a breaking pitch and didn't quite make it. McNally, who has never beaten the Yankees, has been absolutely superb. He's had the benefit of a couple of good fielding plays by his third baseman. The payoff pitch, the check swing bounder. Robinson's got this one. Over to Seaburn, one away. That ball looked like it stretched Lopez to the point where he tried to get his bat out of the way. It was about neck high, but the ball hit it anyway and bounded to Robinson at third. So for the second time in the ballgame, Lopez is out. Robinson to Seaburn. There's one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Now here's Tony Kubek, who struck out in his only other appearance. He's 0 for 1. Kubek gets the first pitch high in the center field. Paul Blair, easily getting under it, takes it, and there are two down. So two up and two down as Kubek hits the first pitch. And now here's Phil Lynn, who bounced the third. He is 0 for 1. Phil got his first base hit of the campaign yesterday. He's 1 for 11, batting under 100. Of course, at that stage, one good day, and you're right back in the beam. Doesn't take long. All right, McNally, the left-hander, the Lynn's a curveball inside, ball one. Robinson pressing in at third base. Lynn's will punt. He's got good speed. McNally again, the 1-0 pitch to Phil. Takes it right in there, one and one. 
Orioles two, Yanks nothing. Last of the fifth inning. Nobody on and two down. The one-one pitch to Lynn, choking up in the bat. He takes outside two and one. The two runs for the Orioles, for those of you who may have just tuned in, came in the second inning with one out. Seaburn singled up the middle and Bleffrey hit a two-run shot into the right field bleachers. Strike two on a check swing. He tried to stop and held up, but it's a strike, a good changeup. Two balls, two strikes to fill. McNally checking Orsino, gets the sign. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Lynn. Hits this one softly into right field. That's going to drop for the first base hit for the Yankees. Dumps the single into right field with two down, and that'll bring up the catcher, Bob Smith. Well, he got several personalities in the stands today at the stadium. Pearl Bailey, fine singing specialist. Meadowlark Lemon, great performer for the Harlem Globetrotters. And Lou Alcindor, the high school phenom. Every college in the country is chasing him. All right, here's Bob Smith who takes a strike in there. Fast ball on the inside corner. In a sense, we have three performers here. Pearl Bailey, who sings, Metal Lark Lemon, who performs on the basketball court, as does Lou Alcindor. Here's the one-strike pitch to Bob Schmidt outside, one and one. Orioles two, Yanks nothing. Last of the fifth. Lenz coming up for the first Yankee hit of the afternoon as he dumps a single into right field with two down. And Dave McNally sets. Checks still at first base. The pitch is Smith. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Lenz is taking almost no lead at all at first base. Left-hand pitcher. Tough to get a lead on a left-hander anyway. Plus the fact the Yankees trail by two. So Phil is hugging first base very closely. There's a check swing on a change-up curveball. One ball, two strikes to Bob Schmidt. Got another game going this afternoon. Right after this one, Robin Roberts and Al Downing. Four games set between these two teams. They stand at one apiece. And McNally said, the one-two pitch. It's dark in the right field. Fleffrey holding ground and takes it. A well-hit ball by Schmidt. Lines right to Fleffrey and right. So for the Yankees in the bottom of the fifth, no run, one hit, one man left. The score after five full innings of play. Baltimore, two runs on three hits. The Yankees, no runs on one hit. Now, Mr. Barber, can you bring us up to date on the activity for the Yankees in the uh, weeks ahead? Well, I'll make a stab at it, Jerry. Anyhow, on this next road trip, which is two weeks, Barber moves out to Cleveland and goes to Washington, then Boston, and on to Baltimore, and we'll get back for a night game for the Red Sox on Tuesday evening, May 18th. But before that two weeks comes along, we have the rest of the doubleheader today, and, of course, the big ball game with the Mets Boys from across the river. Tomorrow evening, here at the stadium at 8 o'clock. That's the third male trophy game between these two ball clubs. All had big attendances. They've all been very excited. Johnny Keane is named Stafford as his starter tomorrow evening. And we have not had a definite uh, commitment from Stingle as to who will start for the match. In case you have somebody. So that's uh, the game out here tomorrow night. The match coming into the stadium. At the end of three innings, first of a doubleheader. Washington leading at Cleveland, 2-0. This one is moving into the sixth inning with the Orioles coming to bat, leading 2-0, and back to Joe. Thank you, Ed. Here comes Dave McNally, the pitcher, who bounced to second base in the third inning. Left-hander who bats from the right side. Mel Stottlemyre all the way for the Yankees. McNally all the way for the Orioles. 2-0. Baltimore leads in the top of the sixth inning as we get underway here. Alley still looking for his first base hit of the year. Hits a one hopper to Lynn's the third on the first pitch. Still to Joe Pepitone, and there's one out. Paul Blair coming on, the young rookie. Came into the game, batting at an even 200. He's 0 for 2. Bounce to third, slide to center. Very thin ball player, about 6 feet, 1 inches tall. Got a good swing, though. Reminds you a lot of Ernie Banks, only a, somewhat of a different stance built along the same line. 
take the care of this in there for a strike, and Lynch was on his way to the plate looking for a potential bunt. Well, Phil was on the move. Kubek is in the hole for Blair as Stottlemyre delivers and swings and fouls it off toward the Oriole dugout. <laughs> now Lynn decides the better part of Valor is to get out of there. Boy, he just moved back after Blair took a swipe at that one. There are two strikes, but Phil sort of breaks on his heels when he swung at that one. There's a two-strike shot in the left field. Right to Mantle, about belt high. for the to put out a line drive. Right at Mickey and left. There are two outs. Now here comes Louis Sanfricio. Bounce to third, bounce to short. 0 for 2. Louis with six stolen bases in six attempts. Leads the American League in that department, as he has for the past nine years. Every year he's been in the big league. Sanfricio came into the game at 3.05. He's one of the truly fine professional performers in the American League. He can do everything. Fine offensive ball player, great defensive ball player. He can do it all. Takes a strike right down there. Luis Aparicio. The one strike pitch on the way to Aparicio. Fouls it off. Strike two. The White Sox, about ten years ago, sold an experienced and time-tested ball player, Chico Carascal, in an effort to play Luis Aparicio, and they were never sorry thereafter. He helped lead them to a pennant in 1959. And he came over to the Orioles and has been a stellar performer there the last few years. He fouls this one straight back. Count holds, no balls, two strikes. Nothing in two to Louis. Two down, nobody on. Top of the sixth inning, and the Orioles lead two to nothing. The Yanks have only one hit. That's by Lynn in the bottom of the fifth. The next pitch gap ratio backs him off the plate. One ball, two strikes. playing the fifth inning. The Senators and the Indians and Washington leads two to nothing. First game of the doubleheader. Aparicio takes a curve ball just outside two and two. Two balls, two strikes to Louie. Gene Woodling, an ex-Yankee, coaching at first base for Baltimore. And another ex-Yankee, Billy Hunter, is at third base. Hank Bauer, of course, one of the great Yankee outfielders of a decade ago, is the manager. Breaking ball is outside Aparicio and it's three and two. And this is a fellow Mel Stottlemyre would just as soon keep off the base pass. You put him at first base, it's like giving him a double. All right, the payoff pitch, Daprisio. Hit hard to left field. Mel's got to go on this one. He's over his shoulder and takes the running pass. something for nothing. Oh, I don't know. Consider the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson bought 13 states from Napoleon for only a few cents an acre. No oh, bargain, but... All right. We got Manhattan Island from the Indians for $24 worth of blankets and beans. And $24 is $24. Then take the case of Rudolph Slick of Shifty Falls, New York. He got a free tank full of gasoline from his Atlantic Red Ball dealer. How come? You know the guarantee. If your Atlantic Red Ball dealer forgets to clean your windshield or offer to check the oil, weather permitting, you get your gasoline free. Now, this offer may vary in some states. But Rudolph won. Right. Just before he drove in, he wiped his own windshield so clean that the dealer forgot. And he got his gasoline free. That he did. But Rudolph felt guilty tricking him like that. So he sold the Atlantic dealer a thoroughbred collie for 15 cents with a guarantee that the dog would never bite. How could he guarantee that? Simple. A bargain dog never bites. Oh. Tomorrow, fill up with your Atlantic Red Ball dealers. Um, you'll be thankful for a thankful. Even if you have to pay for it. Mel Stottlemyre coming on for the Yankees in the last of the sixth inning. Orioles lead two to nothing. Dave McNally all the way for Baltimore. Into the windup. The first pitch to Stottlemyre popped up. Robinson at third base calling for it all the way. And foul territory now takes it for the put out. You know, we have a method here when we keep score of how to define where the great plays were. And we put, I put a little asterisk after them. And I've got five on my card. Two by Brooks Robinson of the Orioles, 
One by Kubek, one by Richardson, and then a great one in left field by Mantle that ended the top of the sixth. We've had him out here today. Tommy Trish takes a curveball inside, ball one. That's part of the charm about these two ball clubs when they get together. They got the power and they've got the defense. Strike one, right down there. One and one to count to Trish. The Orioles are the only team in the last six years to have held the Yanks even. There's a foul back on the screen by Trish. One ball and two strikes. Dave McNally, the left-hander, pitching his best ball game of his career against the Yankees thus far. He's 0-4 against them, never beat them. Trish swings and fouls this at the plate. Count remains, one ball and two strikes. Over the past six years, the Orioles, as we mentioned, are the only club to hold the Yankees to a standoff. Since the start of the 59 season, the Birds are 59 and 59 against the Yankees. No other club can make that statement. Okay, here's the next one to Trash. Decided a swing held up on a low breaking pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Tommy Trash was off to a slow start, but he came on like gangbusters. Came into the game hitting at 3-11. He's 0 for 2 in this contest. Popped to the shortstop and then was out on a great play by Robinson at third. There's a looping fly ball down the first base line. Foul territory into the stands out of play. Count remains at 2-2. Two two. Trash, as he entered the ball game, had 6 for 10 against Oriole pitching in the two games. All right, McNally again. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Tommy. There's a drive left field. That's going to be trouble. Wow, he can't get this one. Off the Gautry and Billy scoreboard. Trish is going to try for three. Here's the relay. That's going to throw. Not in time. credit for the RBI, his third of the year. Dave McNally, the left-hander, to Pepitone, another breaking pitch outside, two balls, no strike. Two and oh to Pepitone, two down, nobody on. Pepitone has bandages on both his right wrist and his left wrist and thumb area where he's got a blister. 2-0 pitch, almost hit Pepitone, backed him away from the plate, 3-0. Well, McNally, for some reason or other, after giving up the run, appears to be visibly disturbed with Pepitone at the plate. He's been wild to the outside on Pepitone by a half a foot to a foot, and then almost hit Joe on the next one. So it's 3-0 and with Mantle in the on-deck circle. Here's the next one by McNally to Pepitone, right down the middle, strike one. Two, Yankees one, bottom of the six. McNally into the windup. Pepitone takes a fastball, splits the middle of the plate, strike two. Three and two to count. 
Cut the tail. We're safe on an error in the first inning, and they walked in the fourth. Now the payoff pitch. It's popped up foul. That ball drifting back to the stand. Garcino isn't going to get a shot at it. Down remains at three and two. got a fine crowd here today on a beautiful sunny afternoon at the stadium. We got another game to go. It'll be Downing and Roberts, the opposing pitchers in the second contest. Here's McNally to Pepitone. Fouls another one back. Three and two can't remain. The Yankees are playing at a definite handicap. They've got three of their regulars out. Roger Maz will be out anywhere from two to three weeks. Elston Howard, a day-to-day -day proposition with the right elbow of the throwing arm sore, and then Boyer with an upset stomach. The payoff pitch again is fouled back by Pepitone for the third time, and it remains at three and two. Plate umpire Larry Knapp had to call for a resupply of baseball with Pepitone following them off into the stand. And then John Arsino flipped the ball to Knapp, said, I want another one. Dave McNally, the left-hander who hails from Butte, Montana. Okay, McNally getting the sign from Orsino. Into the windup. The left-hander to Pepitone. Fouls it back for the fourth straight pitch. That can be rather frustrating to a pitcher after a while. Stottlemyer started the inning by fouling the third baseman Robinson, then Tresh tripled. Richardson got him home on a ground ball, a fine play by Adair, threw out Bobby, but Tresh scored. Now here's Pepitone with two outs, three and two to count, nobody on. Here it comes again. There's a shot in the center field base in. The third hit for the Yankees, that'll bring up now Mickey Mantle coming on. For two, he bounced to third and then hit to Aparicio for a double play. That was in the fourth inning. First pitch to Mickey popped up in the short right. Could be trouble. Lethry digging for the line. He's got a shot for it and takes it. That ball way up there. The height of the ball helped Lethry get to it. So for the Yankees, one run on two hits. No Oriole errors. One man left. The score after six innings of play. Baltimore two, the Yanks one. Right now, I'd like to say that the next portion of this ball game will be brought to you by Valentine Beer. This is the best year yet to try fresh, crisp Valentine Beer. So why don't you settle back and enjoy Valentine and baseball. Okay, let's take a look at the scoreboard, and here's Mr. Barber to bring us up to date on the action in the American and the National League. We're still running pretty well ahead of the other games. Washington leading Cleveland in the first one out there, two to nothing at the end of five. Boston has not begun his doubleheader in Detroit. The Twins are in Chicago to play two. Uh, Cox will start the first Minnesota against John of Chicago. Los Angeles is yet to open up for a pair at Kansas City. The end of the first inning, first game, the Mets at Cincinnati, 1-0 New York. Remember, the Mets uh, come in from the doubleheader at Cincinnati to the stadium for the Mayor's Trophy game tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. The Bills in their first at bat at Milwaukee, first game, no score. End of the first inning, First game, Pittsburgh, two, St. Louis, nothing. Sargo hit a home run with one on for the pass. Houston is at home to the Cubs for a single. Los Angeles is at home to the Giants for a single. That's it. Okay, Jerry. Thanks, Red. Here's John Powell facing Stottlemyre. Takes the fastball in there for a strike. The big left fielder, John Boo Powell, 235 to 40 pounds, 6 feet 3 inches tall. He is big. A one strike pitch, a check swing, ball strike two. Started to go after it, held up, and the umpire said it was in there. Nothing in two to Powell. Powell bounced to the shortstop in the first inning, and that was out on a spectacular play by Bobby Richardson, a one hopper that he backhanded as he turned his back on the ball. Came up with it, and Powell was out of there. All right, here's the two strike delivery. One on a hit, strike three. So, Stottlemyre. 
strikes out Powell as we move into the top of the seventh inning. And that is Battlemeyer's first strikeout. McNally has only struck out two and walked one. Battlemeyer struck out one, walked no one. Here's Robinson, flies to left, bounce to third, takes one in there, strike one. Ball game moving along, very crisp action out here, great fielding, one big blow. A two-run shot by Bluffrey in the second inning gave the Orioles all their runs, and the Yankees countered with one in the bottom of the sixth on Tresh's triple, and Richardson's ground out. The count is one and one to Brooks Robinson. Took a pitch, blowing outside. Now Salomeyer again, a one-one delivery. Fouled off out of play into the upper deck. One ball, two strikes. Kubek, with Stottlemyre pitching, I've noticed, shades all these right-hand batters in the hole and fairly deep. All right, the 1-2 delivery to Robinson. Curve just missed outside. Bob Schmidt and Stottlemyre both wanted that one. Two and two. Schmidt actually started to flip the ball to Lynn, who's playing third base today. Stottlemyre again, into the windup. 2-2 two -two delivery. Hit hard to left field. Mantle, who was back anyway, takes about 10 steps to his right and pulls it down. That ball was well hit by Robinson, but Mickey was playing deep and didn't have to go too far. All right, Norm Seaburn coming on. Seaburn singles in the second inning with one out and then scored ahead of Lefrey's homer. Then in the fourth inning, bounced to second. He's one for two. Seaburn off to a fairly slow start. Came into the game batting at 2-12. Here's Saddlemeyer's first pitch to Norm, and it's inside, ball one. They've been trying to pitch Seaburn in on the knees, right on the inside portion of the plate. Now let's see where it goes again. The 1-0 delivery. This one is over the middle. That ball could be trouble. Lopez is right there to take it. A well-hit ball that was sinking. Didn't have the loft to it. Drove Lopez almost to the barrier in right field. There's three up and three down on the top of the seventh. The score after six and a half. The Orioles two and the Yankees one. Can you recognize this old tune? Did you recognize it? Well, maybe you will if we play it this way. It's Camp Town Races. Stephen Foster proposed it way back in 1850. By the time it caught on, P. Valentine and Sons had been in the brewing business for over a decade. This is Valentine's 125th birthday. The best year yet to try fresh, crisp Valentine beer. Join the celebration. Come to the birthday blowout where you buy your beer. And if today happens to be your birthday, happy birthday from Valentine. the bottom of the seventh. Let's pause for station identification. Attention, please. please. You are listening, are listening to, to Yankee, Yankee Baseball, Baseball on WOKO Albany, Albany, New York. Thank you. Thank you. Back with the action here at Yankee Stadium with the Orioles leading the Yanks two to one at the bottom of the seventh. Lopez just took a breaking ball inside and it's ball one. Dave McNally ready again. Pitches outside this time. Two and over the count. Two balls, no strikes. Yankees trail by one, bottom of the seventh. McNally again, the pitch, high, 3-0. Now ah, there's Harry Burkeen giving a signal to the Oriole bullpen. Looks like they want a sinker baller as they hold the hand very low. They have a sign, a different sign for each pitcher. It's quite a bit of confusion yesterday on the pitching changes. There's high and inside Hector Lopez. So on four straight pitches, McNally walks Lopez. Oh, the potential tying run goes to first base. Stu Miller is up, throwing for the Orioles in the bullpen. See, that's the second walk given up by McNally. Orioles, two runs on three hits. The Yankees, one run on three hits. Now here's Tony Kubek. Struck out. Fly to center. Lopez, in his two previous appearances, had bounced to third. Robinson is not 
rushing Kubek at this point. Oh, he's coming in slightly. They're not looking too much for the run. Tony Squares jumps it. And McNally's got it. Goes to second base in time for the force on Hector Lopez. That ball was a one-hopper, sort of a lazy one-hopper that McNally could get to on the first bounce. Wheels fired at Riccio, so the sacrifice is no good. Lopez out at second base. Play going from one to six on the fielder's choice. Now Tony Kubek at first base, and here's Phil Lenz, who got one of the Yankee three hits. In fact, the first hit in the fifth inning by a Yankee. Hit a looping single into right field. Hank Bauer, the Yankee manager, with his foot up on the edge of the dugout there. I mean the Oriole manager. What did I say, the Yankee manager? Well, he played for the Yankees long enough, I guess. Here is Lynn taking a curveball inside ball one. Here's Johnny Keene, the Yankee manager, facing the Yankee dugout. Yanks trail by one at the 2 1 ball game. Bottom of the seventh. There goes Kubek. The pitch to Lynn. Hit to Aparicio. Got it. No chance to go to second. Over to first base. Lynn is out of there on the hit and run, but Tony moves to second. Phil Lenz on the hit and run. Moves Kubek to second base. Now to bring up Bob Schmidt. The potential tying run at second base in the person of Tony Kubek. Bob Schmidt and Johnny Blanchard have been doing the catching for the Yankees. Well, every game except opening day since Ellie Howard has been out of the lineup with that bothersome throwing arm. Schmidt, right-hand batter, digging in. The pitch by McNally is fouled back behind the plate. Strike one. John Powell in left field giving Schmidt plenty of room. He's way back there. Schmidt hit a home run the other night and a single. The Orioles beat the Yankees 10-4 on Friday night and the Yankees Turn the script around, beat Baltimore yesterday 9 to 4 behind Whitey Ford's first complete game of the year. One strike pitch to Bob, a change up that is a little bit low, and it's one and one. McNally in no hurry out there. Digging around the turf with his spikes. Now he sets himself on the rubber. Gets a sign from Orsino. Takes a look at Kubek at second. Here's a pitch to Schmidt. A high fly ball. Right field. Lefrey camping under this one. Takes it for the foot out. That retires the Yankees in the bottom of the seventh inning. No run. No hit. No Oriole errors. One man left to score after seven full innings of play. Baltimore two and the Yanks one. Can you recognize this old tune? Did you recognize it? Well, maybe you will if we play it this way. It's Oh Susanna. Stephen Foster composed it way back in 1848. By the time it caught on, P. Valentine and Sons had been in the brewing business for over a decade. This is Valentine's 125th birthday. The best year yet to try fresh, crisp Valentine beer. Join the celebration. Come to the birthday blowout where you buy your beer. And if today happens to be your birthday, happy birthday from Valentine. Yankees won as we move into the eighth inning. And the first batter from Baltimore, Kurt Leffrey. And he's the guy who's done all the damage. Mel Stottlemyre made one bad pitch. That was in the second inning. Steven was on and Leffrey parked it. And that's the way the ball game is right now. The Orioles do and the Yanks won as Stottlemyre gets ready to face Kurt Leffrey. Leffrey also had an infield single in the fifth. These two for two. Pitch by Stottlemyre. Curve ball inside and it's ball one. I talked to Bleffrey before the ball game, and he said, you know, I'm really not hitting. All he's doing is leading the American League in home runs with five. Another curve that's low, 
two and out of the count. Buffery came into the game hitting 263. Two doubles, four home runs. That's been raised to five home runs. He had 10 RBIs, now he's got 12. He takes low and it's 3 0. So Stottlemyre is treating this young left hand slugger of the Orioles with a great deal of respect. John Orsino, the catcher, is in the on deck circle. He'll be followed by Jerry Adair. Here's a 3 0 pitch to Buffery, right in there. 3 and 1. And that can be a dangerous pitch to throw to a man like this. Because you never know, he might just be unloading. Salomire laid it right in there. Now Mel steps off the rubber after not being able to get together with Bob Schmidt on the sign and wants another look. Bobby Richardson and Pepitone are playing Bleffrey deep and a pull. Here's the next one, low and inside to Bleffrey, ball four and he walks. So Bleffrey holds on to his perfect afternoon. He's two for two. That's the first walk given up by Stottlemyre. Now here's John Orsino. In the second inning, a line, one that looked like it was heading for left field, Tony Kubek jumped as high and as far as he could jump and pulled it down. And then Orsino bounced into a double play in the fifth. Not too fast, but he's got power. He's got four home runs. Came into the game hitting an even 300. Right-hand batter, good power. Left leads off first, and a pitch out. Well, they were looking for something. Now the strategy is really rolling as Orsino takes a look at Hunter. Orioles two and the Yankees one. Orsino is not what you would call the type of man you would use in a sacrifice situation. He got the power. Throw to first, left back. He probably have two of the slower men on the Oriole ball club right now in the base pass. All right, here's the one-up pitch to Arsino. On the ground to Richardson. He takes it. Flip to Kubek for one. Throw to first. Double play. So Arsino bounces into a second double play. He hits that ball right on the end of the bat. Not too hard to Bobby, but because of his slow speed, was out by a half a stride at first. That one going from four, six, three. Two down. And now here's Jerry Adair. Going right down to the wire. There the batter. Stottlemyre delivers. There's a shot into right center base hit over Richardson's head. Jerry Adair, who had popped the short and flied to right, comes up with his first base hit of the afternoon. Line single to right center. That's only the fourth hit off Stottlemyre. Both Stottlemyre and McNally have been superb on the pitching end, as has been the defense for both teams. This is one of those ball games that true baseball lovers enjoy got everything in it. The good pitching, the good defense, the one big shot gets the big two runs. Baltimore two, Yankees one. Two down, Adair at first. Here's McNally, the pitcher, takes low on its ball one. The bleachers here at the stadium are well represented today. A lot of people out there. 1-0 pitch is grounded to Kubek slowly at short. He goes to first base to get McNally, and that takes care of the Orioles in the top of the eighth inning. No run, one hit, no Yankee errors, one man left. Score after seven and a half. Baltimore two, Yankees one. Sing a song of service. Atlantic keeps your car on the go. Atlantic Red Ball dealer service. For business, for pleasure, in any kind of weather. Atlantic keeps your car on the go. Driving can be a pleasure when your car is performing smoothly, when the windshield's shining clean, and every little detail has had careful attention. In other words, when you take your car to an Atlantic Red Ball station, where dependable service is guaranteed to every customer, every time. At the Red Ball sign, your Atlantic dealer will always clean your windshield, weather permitting, and offer to check the oil, or your gasoline purchase is free. This offer may vary in some states, but Atlantic Red Ball dealer service never varies. It's just another way. Atlantic keeps your car on the go, 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 go. Keep on the go with Atlantic. Okay, we've got a pinch hitter for Mel Stottlemyre and it's Pedro Gonzalez. Elston Howard 
for some of you who might think that he should be up there. He's got a bad right arm, and he can't throw or swing. Now, here's Gonzalez taking a breaking ball that's blowing inside ball one. Dave McNally all the way for the Orioles. He leads 2-1. to one. The next one to Gonzalez. Low and outside, 2-0. and oh. McNally falling behind the pinch hitter, Pedro Gonzalez, here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bird sitting on top of a 2-1 a to one lead. Here's the next pitch to Gonzalez. Right in there, 2-1. Two, two balls, one strike. McNally ready again. The 2-1 delivery. Swung on a miss. Strike two. Two and two. Gonzalez taking the big swing. Tommy Tresh in the on deck circle. Two balls, two strikes. Last of the eighth. And we got another game coming up immediately following this one. Robin Roberts and Al Downing, the opposing pitchers. 2-2 two -two pitch to Gonzalez. Way inside, 3-2. and two. Incidentally, Roberts has won more ball games than any other active pitcher in the American League. Warren Spawn, of course, has that distinction in the National. The payoff pitch to Gonzalez. Swings and misses. Strike three. A good fastball by Dave McNally. That's strikeout number three for young McNally. Now here's Tommy Tresh. Tresh scored the only Yankee run in the third inning. When with one out, he tripled and then came home on Bobby Richardson. Ground ball to second baseman Jerry Adair. Tresh, one for three, as McNally delivers, and he takes inside ball one. See, Tresh is seven for 13 in this series with the Orioles. Two doubles, a triple, and one home run. 1-0 pitch to Tom, change up, sort of a screwball, it was outside, 2-0. McNally appears to be working on a pitch that could make him a big winner. That's sort of a change up screwball. He can hit that outside corner, get close to it, and get those right-hand batters chasing. He'll have something. 2-0 delivery to Tommy is low. 3-0. Three, oh. Three balls, no strike. Bobby Richardson hits on deck circle. So Dave McNally runs the count to three balls, no strikes to trash. Here's the next one on the way. In there for a strike, three and one. Alley went to 3-0 and on Gonzalez before striking him out. Now here's a 3-1 pitch to Tresh. Strike two. Well, maybe he's got a pattern of pitching that's different. I know it isn't uh, easy for manager Hank Bauer to watch it, though. Orioles two, Yankees one, last of the eighth, one out. Three and two to Tommy Tresh. Here's McNally into the lineup. The pitch, change up, hit sharply to third. Robinson has it. Over to Seaburn, two down. Fresh hit the ball well. In fact, Robinson had it in a half hop, made a fine play to catch it. Those are tough ones. You're not in the low scoop or the high bounce. You got it halfway in between. Here's Bobby Richardson. Top to second, fly to right, and then out on a ground ball where Adair made a great play. There's a check swing bounder. Aparicio's got to go quick, barehanded over to first. In time on a fine play. Well, I've got to say this right now. I don't know when I've seen a ball game where both teams made so many good plays. It's three up and three down for the Yankees in the eighth inning. The score after eight full. Baltimore two and the Yankees one. Well, tomorrow night, as you know, Mr. Barber, we're going to have a lot of activity here at Yankee Stadium. Always is when the Mets come over or when the Yankees go over there. This will be the third one of the Mayor's Trophy game between these two ball clubs. And of course, uh, the first two were real beauty. At 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. Right now, we've uh, got a ninth inning of this first game that is something. Moving down to the Oriole bullpen is Jackie Bryant, an experienced outfielder. Find that later that means something. We have a new man coming in out of the Yankee bullpen. Saddlemire just gave way for a pinch hitter, as Jerry told you. This is now Rennick. He's coming on. Captain Smith is waiting at the mound to check battery signs with him. And let me uh, second the second baseman appraisal. I don't know when I've seen a ball game that has had as many brilliant 
plays in it. All but one has been on the infield. And, uh, you know, you could just take a lesson how baseball ought to be placed and where they put this one on in the first ball game. Robinson at third base has been outstanding. Good had a fine play. Now, Parisio, but he, I don't know, he makes them all the time. I saw Roller just now was very important. Paddle has a play in deep left center field. It's just been that way. It's a two-to-one ball game. Everything is very definitely earned. And we're now charging into the ninth inning. You ready, Joe? Sure, I'm Red. We've got Hal Rennup coming on. In place of Mel Salomire. So Salomire can lose this ball game and he can't win it. Rennup coming on a relief to pitch the ninth inning for the Yankees. And he'll face the top three batters in the Orioles batting order. Paul Blair, Louis Aparicio, and John Booth Powell. Rennup is making his sixth appearance on the year. He's 0-1. All of those, of course, in relief. Last year, he was 6-4 and four for the Yankees. Now, here's young Paul Blair, a rookie. Bounced to third. Fly to center and lined out to Mantle in left field. Hit the ball well the last time up. Raniff is into the lineup. The first pitch to Blair is a curveball in there. Strike one. Senators still lead the Indians. Two to nothing. They're playing in the seventh inning, first of a doubleheader. Boston failed to score on the top of the first against the Detroit Tigers. There's a foul back on the screen, strike two. Minnesota failed to score on the top of the first against the Chicago White Sox. Los Angeles to Kansas City, not yet underway. The National League, the Mets won, Cincinnati nothing in the first of a pair. No score between the Phillies and the Braves after two. That's the first game of a doubleheader. Here's Rennup into the windup. The pitch to Blair is fouled off. Count holds nothing and two. Pittsburgh leads St. Louis two to nothing after two and a half. Stars are homered in the first with one on for the Pirates. Chicago, Houston, San Francisco, and L.A. Single games and later starts. Two strike pitch. Whoa! Uh oh, that ball hit Blair. It looked like it hit him in the left arm. He went down. It was a breaking ball, and it appears as though oh, it hit the bat. Didn't hit him. The way he went down and held that left hand up there, I thought it got him, but it hit the bat and caromed off. So the count holds that nothing in two. That's a good way to scare the daylight out of a batter and still not lose anything. Two-strike pitch by Rennes. The ground ball. Lynn has it going to his left. Nice play to Pepitone. One away. Lynn scooting right in front of Kubek at short. One-handed the ball. There's one down, and now here's Aparicio. Aparicio, 0 for 3, bounced to third, bounced to short, and that was robbed by Mickey Mantle on a spectacular play over his head that would have gone up for at least three bases. So he takes high and inside from Renner. Ball one. The Orioles with four hits, the Yankees with three. Baltimore leads 2-1, to one, top of the ninth. Renner again into the windup. Hard hit ball. Kubek to his left, up with it, over to first. Two down. So it's two up and two down for the Orioles in the ninth. And now here's Powell. Powell bounced to short. Robbed on a great play by Bobby Richardson in the fourth inning at second base on a hard one hopper. And then struck out in the seventh. Renup ready. The pitch to Powell is low and inside, ball one. First game of a doubleheader here at the stadium. Beautiful sunny afternoon. Renup again to Powell. Change up in the dirt. 2-0 the count. In the second ball game, as we've been telling you, you happen to be in the area, still got time to make it. It'll be Robin Roberts, who's won himself 273 Major League ball games against Al Downing. Oh, a veteran and a youngster going at it in the second day. Powell takes high, three and zero the count. Powell ran up ready again. The three zero pitch is a slow dribbler down the first base side. Ran up is over, picks it up, and races to the bag to make the play unassisted. So three up and three now for Baltimore. Top of the ninth inning. The score after eight and a half. Baltimore, two runs on four hits. The Yankees, one run on three hits. Camels really.
real taste satisfies longer. Camel's real taste satisfies longer. Camel's real taste satisfies longer. The best taste you can get. You get tobacco taste. So rich and rare. A real taste. And that's really there. You get the bad, no fancy stuff. Real flavor with every puff. Tobacco taste so rich and rare. A real taste that's really there. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. So get the camel and try a real smoke. Have a camel cigarette. For the Yankees in the last half of the ninth inning as they trail two to one, the heart of the batting order, Joe Pepitone, Mickey Mantle, and Hector Lopez. Now we have two defensive changes for the Orioles. Russ Snyder is in right field, Jackie Branch in left field. Jackie Branch goes in for Powell, playing left field. Snyder in for Bleffrey in right. Dave McNally delivers a low pitch that's inside the Pepitone. It's ball one. He's ready to go in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yankees trailing by one. Here's McNally again. Curve the south side. 2-0 oh the count. Check that. The plate umpire says it's one and one. Here's the one-one pitch to Pepitone. Hard hit the right field. They hit. Pepitone digging for two, and he's going to make it. So, Joe Pepitone opens up for the double, and the Yankees have the potential time run at second base. Here comes Mantle. He's 0 for 3. Pepitone definitely out of that batting slump. He's 2 for 3 this afternoon. Single and a double. Now here's McNally pitching to Mantle. High fly ball to right field. Pepitone is tagging up. Snyder is getting the ball. There goes Joe. Here's the throw. It may be... No, no chance of cut off. this ball game hanging on the bats of Hector Lopez and Tony Kubek who's in the on-deck circle Orioles 2, Yankees 1 Pepitone at third base one out, last half of the night both teams with four hits Oriole infield playing in, here's the pitch to Lopez fouled off, strike one so we're right down to the wire and now Abricio is signaling Russ Snyder in right field to move more toward the line. There goes Paul Blair, shifting from center field more into the right center gap. Lopez takes a strike, nothing in two. Hector Lopez, no ball, two strikes. Hey, I haven't seen the stimulation by the fans here at the stadium like this in some time. Boy, they're ready. All right, McNally again. The pitch is low. Nice stop by John Arcino. Almost got through. One ball, two strikes. Now Frank Cressetti talking to Pepitone, reminding him that make the ball go through. In other words, don't get caught up between home and third because then you lose the tying run, which is the third base. Here's Lopez. Swings and misses strike three. strikes out. They're two down, and now it's up to Tony Kubek. Kubek has struck out, slide to center, hit into a fourth play. 
Dave McNally, all the way for the Orioles. He's never beaten the Yankees. 0 on 4 against the Yankees. Pepitone at third. Here's the pitch to Tony. Hit the left center. That ball is in there. John Orsino, Hank Bauer on the mound. And McNally, who was one out away from his first victory against the Yankees, is out of the ballgame. He can't win it, but he can lose it. Stu Miller coming on. Miller, who's been accused of having three speeds, slow, slower, and slower than that, is coming on in relief here in the bottom of the ninth with two down. The Yankees with runners at first and second. Bob Schmidt is the batter. Arturo Lopez has come out in the on-deck circle. And it looks like he's going to bat for Bob Schmidt. So Johnny Keane going to his bench. Cardinals, and then was a fine relief pitcher with the Giants, and then came on to the Orioles a few years ago. Arturo Lopez will be the batter. He's replacing Bob Schmidt, so Johnny Keane playing the percentage. Wants a left-hand batter against the softball tosses. Bob Stu Miller. Now we've got one of these unusual switches. Hank Bauer is sending Jackie Brandt from left to right field because he's got the good arm. And Russ Snyder goes from right field to left. Of course, Hank playing the percentage. Again, trying to get that good arm, and Brandt's got it. He can cut you down. He got fresh on a great throw yesterday. So Brant moves to right, Schneider to left, Arturo Lopez on, batting for Bob Smith. Stu Miller, pitching for the Orioles, Kubek at second base, Lins at first, 2-2 two -two tie. The first pitch to Lopez is low and it's ball one. 
Miller is the kind of a guy that can be tough for a fellow if he hasn't seen him before. All right, Miller cuts again. The pitch to Lopez. Wings and misses on the changeup. Strike one. One and one. Stu Miller making his fifth appearance of the year. He's one and two on the season. Last year he was seven and seven, which is the record of both these ball clubs as they came into this game. They're at 500, seven wins, seven losses. The one-one pitch to Lopez. Ground ball. A dare. Up with it. Got to go to the pitcher. Makes the play in time for the fourth to first, and we go into extra innings. For the Yankees, in the bottom of the ninth inning, one run on two hits. No Oriole errors. Two men left. And after nine full innings of play, it's the Orioles two and the Yankees two. Well, I'll give you a quick recap of this ball game for those of you who may have just tuned in. In the second inning, Norm Seaburn singled with one out, and Kurt Bleffrey shot one over the Yankee bullpen in right field to make it 2 nothing. The Yankees came back with a run in the sixth inning when Tommy Tresh tripled with one out and scored on the infield out by Bobby Richardson. And then here in the bottom of the ninth inning, Pepitone opened with a double to right. Mantle applied to right field, sending Pepitone to third. Lopez struck out, Hector Lopez. And then Tony Kubek with two outs in the ball game in the balance, double to left center to drive in Pepitone, and we go into extra innings. And coming on to do the hitting for the Orioles here is a cleanup batter, Brooks Robinson. And coming on to carry it down the line is the old redhead once more, Red Barber. Right, Jerry. Well, there's not a thing the matter with baseball that a game that's played the way this is being played can't take care of. This is a honey. There's the announcement on Blanchard coming on to catch here in the 10th inning. Jerry told you. Starting catch is set. Gave way for pinch hitter Arturo Lopez, who rolled out. And here we go in a tough one, two and two. McNally came within one pitch of getting his first win over the Yankees. Two back shot to it, he didn't get the win. This uh, tying run got Stoudemire off the hook. He's now no longer running for the decision. And it's up to the two relief men. Rennes was set to go, pitching to Brooks Robinson here in the 10th. And Stu Miller will replace McNally. Robinson, the right-hand hitter. First pitch is high inside from Rennes, ball one. Brooks is on all for three. This is the first of a doubleheader. He's moved now into inning 10. All tied, two and two. Big right-handed delivers as a ball hit right to the middle for a base hit. So Robinson is on. A single into center field. This starts Madison inning 10. For the Yankees, we're going with the same infield. All through the first ball game. Peppertone is first. Richardson is second. Two back who knocked in the tying run. Is at short. Tony has so many hits this year, but they've been very timely. Third baseman is Lynn. Madeline left field. Brogan catch to his credit. Center fielder is fresh. Right fielder Hector Lopez. Here's Norm Stevens. Left hand hitting first baseman. And the pitch is high off the mid back to the stand, and there's Robinson going down to second. He's around second and then holds on. Seedman was set to bunt. They played it for the bunt, which meant that Lenz was charging. Then the ball was high and got off Blanchard's mitt, and he is charged with a pass ball. So now, um, unless Bauer wants the man moved over to third base, he doesn't have to worry about the bunt. He's got his big hitters. He's got some of his big hitters. Stephen swings it down, foul, outside first. Strike one, one and one. Fast ball has moved Robinson, the top breaking run down to second base. Ball game hanging two and two. The defense well around toward right. They play um, Norm to pull. The relief right hand then, now running. At the belt, pitches. Stephen swings and has a high fly ball into Charlie Short center field. Gary Trish digging in. Kubek goes out and Kubek makes the catch. They almost run together. Kubek almost dropped the ball. Trish hit the ground to keep from sliding into the shortstop who wouldn't give up. Kubek kept right on. And then just as Trish hit the ground, Kubek almost went. You could understand it. Uh, pulled his hand back about a half an inch. The ball hit the pocket of his glove bounce once and he snugged it. Robinson staying in second base. A 
That's always a tough play. That borderline play between the infield and the outfielder. Okay, now is Russ Snyder, who went in as a defensive move in the ninth inning. They're going to walk him deliberately. Get rid of a left-handed hitter in this spot. And to Arsino, a right-handed batter, who has hit a line drive to short and grounded into two double plays. There's ball two. A delivered base on ball coming up to Snyder. There's ball three. And ball four. The Snyder moves to first base. Robinson holds the second. Two-two ball game, one out. Top of the tenth. Two back jumped up and caught Arsino's line drive in the second. It was a soft ladder. And then John hit into double plays in the fifth and eighth. Ball zinging salmon by playing up by Larry Knapp. Leaves it in play. Knapp at the plate, Drummond at first, Kenneman at second, Stevens at third. Brennan, his ball game to win or lose. Marcino, the catcher. Out to foot left, right hand hitter. Curve is low, ball one. Infield is back. Double play back. The position of the infield tells us that the Yankees are playing for it. Brennan looks the second pitches, and Marcino hits the line drive off the third base. Just did pick the ball and it got on top of his glove and into left field. It would have been a brilliant play had Lynn been able to pull it off. As it was, Arsino gets a base hit into left, refuses to hit into the double play, which he almost did, and it is now a 3 2 ball game, Baltimore. It was Baltimore 2 0, 2 1, 2 2. Now it is Baltimore 3 2. Base hit for Arsino into left. Here is second baseman Jerry Adair. Takes the curve low inside. This is the fellow who is adding to the record for second baseman at each play that he makes. Snyder's the runner at second base. Robinson is in the dugout for that third run. Then it checks the lead runner pitches. The curve inside. And it is ball two. Two and oh. Adair, one for three. Single to right. Last time up. Renick is now a run behind, and it is his run. He's responsible for it. That feels up to left. Right hand batter crouches. Takes the curve in for the strike. Two and one. One man out. Inning 10, game one. Marcino has just knocked the tie-breaking run home. Leading off first. Cup it on his back deep. Runner in second. One, two, the pit there's a line drive in the left field. And here is Snyder coming over to third base. They bring him on in. Here comes the runner. Here comes the wait. The run is in, and they have Arsino out at third base. And this was, I hate to say it, but this was a flagrant taking advantage of Mattel in left field on his throw. Billy Hunter had to run on the third base, and Mattel had the ball and brought him in. The throw was cut off by Lynn. They couldn't stop the run as the Orioles go ahead four to two. But as Lynn uh, cut the ball off, Arsino was hung up between second and third, and Lynn nailed it. Throw was over to two back to covered. So we have a bear at first base who drove in the fourth run. It's now four to two, Baltimore. Here in the tenth, second time today in this opener, the Orioles lead four two. And the hitter is the relief pitcher, Stu Miller, and it's his ball game to win. If he can hold any part of this advantage. Right hand batter and takes inside ball one. A single to left for Adele. Gives him a run by the All runs in this game are in. One off pitch inside ball two. Arsino is out. The left fielder, third base is the shortstop. Smiley scores. Renick, now not working as rapidly. Behind two and all. Pitches, low outside, ball three. Three balls, no strike. Miller takes a look down to third, Billy Hunter. Just waves his two runs in.
pitches all over the strike. Three and one. Two balls, one strike. Up to is not deep, straight away. Miller looking down toward third to see if they want him to take another one. Then it delivers over for a strike, and the take was on. Now it's full count three and two, and he doesn't have to look. Three balls, two strikes. And there at first. Pitch is swung on, hit slowly back to the middle. That's two back up over the short goes to first base in time for the out on Miller. Third out, top of the tent. But before that happened, the Orioles who came into the 10th tie, two and two, came up with two on, three hits. Four, and at nine and a half, first game, Baltimore four, New York two. If you've got a minute, I've got a picture to paint. You're home from a long day's work. You've earned yourself a beer, and you get a light idea. Step over to the old refrigerator, swing open the door, and swing out a cold Valentine beer. Flip off the cap, get a glass, and that frosty cold Valentine comes pouring on. And that's beer. Valentine is crisp and clean. Valentine's light and lively. Valentine's easy to stay with. Beer after beer after beer. Now, how's that sound? Good? Well, great. Get yourself some Valentine. Give yourself a smile. You've earned it. We're going into the last of the tenth inning. First of a double header. Baltimore leading four to two, just coming up with two. Well, how big they are, we'll soon find out. Johnny Key makes his first move, last of the inning. He sends up Duke Carmel, Bronx boy, who's looking for his first hit in the Bronx, as a member of the Yankees, to bat for relief pitcher Rennie. Relief pitcher Miller, slight veteran right-hander. In baseball, they have an expression for this type of pitcher. They call him a junk man. Jerry put it in a different way. He pitches slow, slower, and slower than that. Carmel, big strapping left-handed batter. Then after him will be Fresh and Richardson. The Yankees need two to stay alive. That's the situation right now. Last to the tenth, first game. Right-handed Miller delivers low inside ball one. Miller gives you lots of pumping moves. One thing he gives you that is very upsetting to the hitter is the motion of his forward foot, his left foot. He does things with it. Kicks it. There's a knuckleball swung on in that strike one. Miller winds around out there with his arms and then kicks that foot, twists it, moves it. In other words, he doesn't present a set target. Delivers and strikes. Two swinging and ball is dancing again. One and two. Last to the tenth. It'll be Downing and Roberts pitches in the second game. One-two pitch is strike three swinging, and he's slowed up on the slower. So that sends the Duke away. One down, last of the tenth. And here is Crash. Hit a big triple in the sixth inning. The bottom of the cast for the Yankees' first score. That made it two to one. Then the Yankees in the last of the night with two outs. Got in the tying run. Orioles came up with two themselves just now. Very fresh fighting left-handed. Swing fouls it off. And Miller gave him what I'd say is a change of pace. His fastball. I'm not joking. Our engineer Joe Cooper and our colleague Mr. Coleman are smirking, but I mean it. When a fellow pitches the way he pitches, the fastball is his change. He works. And it is strike two. He gave him that junk stuff that was jumping on the outside. These hitters tell me that it makes them doubly enraged when they're up there because here it is coming up there so slow you can catch it in your bare hand. You just can't wait to swing at it. See, two strikes hit just outside, bar one.
One ball, two strikes. Miller works. There's a line drive, two short. He had a knuckle ball, and you could see it still nothing as he went to Aparicio. Two out. So, uh, a few moments ago, the Yankees had rallied to time, and now they're down to their last out, and they are behind two runs. Bobby Richardson is off for four. He's been robbed of base hits his last two trips, but did not in a run. Miller works right through there for a strike. Hank Bauer contends that even though his bullpen men have some age on them, if he will stop them properly, they can do the job. But Miller's had plenty of rest. He works. That's a ground ball to third. Brooks Robinson up with it. The throw. It's over. The ball game is over. Miller sets the guy down in order. Brooks Robinson all up to Norm Stephen for the last out. And the first game is won in 10 innings by the Orioles. Four to two.